Hey guys, Mike from the Off Grid Shop here. Today in this video, I get asked all the time, everyone wants to know what I do at home with my solar system and what batteries I have and all that sort of stuff. So today I'm going to do a bit of a deep dive. I'm going to show you pretty much what I've got, how it works, all the things I do. I probably have one of the most complicated systems out on the marketplace. I'm actually just going to show you on a desktop today all the different products and programs. And then what I'm going to do in the next couple of videos I'm going to give you a walk around my system and show you all the components and all the ins and outs that they could do. So let's get stuck in it. I'll share my screen with you now. Okay. So basically, I've got a Victron system here at home. And I, the reason I love using Victron because there's actually so much you can do with it. You know, I'm working with someone at the moment who's going to write me some programs and things like that. Uh, the good thing with Victron is open source. And if you've got the skills and the knowledge, you can write programs and get it to do what you want. If you don't have those skills, like I don't personally, I'm just talking to some guys and, hey, look, this is what I want to do. Great. But what I've actually done between now and then is I've actually used a lot of different programs to do what I want to do. And I'm going to show you some crazy stuff that I do here at home and um, give you an understanding. So I've actually got a three-phase system. Now, this is a question we get asked all the time. People want to know, Mike, how do I back up three-phase? I don't back up three-phase. Now, I'll show you a three-phase system here. Let me jump up here. Now, a three-phase system, if you really want to back up a three-phase system using the Victron gear, you require three inverters. As you can see there, there's an inverter on each phase, and that's how you back up a three-phase system. I don't do that. What I've actually done in my house, I've actually only got, I've got three-phase grid-connected inverters. So I've got three-phase grid-connected inverters. I've got a single-phase Victron Quattro at the moment. Now, I do have plans over time to eventually get to that three-phase backup, but at the moment, I've just got one inverter that backs it up. And I've got one circuit. So if there's a blackout, I'd have one circuit that would be backed up. And the reality with the way my system set up, how it works, the Victron pretty much won't last that long because I don't have that much battery storage. And we'll get into how I do my other backups and things like that. So, um, yeah, so I've got three phase. So if you were looking at my system design, I've got the grid. I've got all my grid connected inverters here. I've got a diagram getting worked on at the moment. So all my grid connected inverters are on the grid side. Then I've got my Victron, my batteries, and an off-grid here. I've got nothing that charges the batteries except my generator. So in, an, in, a, in a blackout situation. So I don't actually have any of the solar panels on this output there. If you did want your solar system to work in a blackout uh, and you want to charge it and you didn't have a generator, you'd want the panels and stuff over here. But the reality in my experience I've had with blackouts, floods the last six months and in the last 10 years doing this, I think once or twice in my whole entire life, I've actually had a blackout when the sun's been shining. So um, most of the time, it's a waste of time having your solar panels over on that output for a blackout, unless there's going to be two or three weeks of prolonged blackout. So something to think about and be and, and consider. Now, um, we'll show you over here. So this is my system right now. And as you can see, we're pulling energy from the grid. We're basically, you know, I think my system's actually charging a car right now. Um because I've got some smarts built in my system, which is not good for my batteries. When I say not good for my batteries, like not good for charging my batteries right now. That's why I want to work with someone that can write me a program. Um, right now, the energy from the grid is dirt cheap. Uh, last time I looked at it, I'll show you. I've got an app on my phone. Here we go. So let's have a look. So I'm on a different system to most people out there. I'm just going to show you that in the camera there. Oh. So three cents. So that's what I'm actually paying at the moment for energy. So the energy from the grid's cheap uh, if I'm buying it from the grid. So I'm buying, paying it for three cents. So instead of trying to charge my batteries, I'm just taking energy from the grid right now, charging my car, getting it full. And I want that ability when the energy is really cheap in the middle of the day to charge it. I've got a, got a solution at night. I don't have a daytime solution, which we'll get to. Um, so as you can see here, what's going on, and you can see I've got the grid and my PV inverters over here. If you've got a Victron system and you've got Victron inverters off-grid, basically when there's a blackout, this would actually sit over here in this little corner over here. All your Victron inverters that are off-grid sit over here. So um, I'm actually am adding some panels here direct to batteries. I just got a new shed put up, which is pretty exciting. So I'm going to whack a couple of solar panels up on that there, and they're going to go direct to batteries. Uh, they're more going to be for testing and things like that. But, you know, there's four solar panels going up. It's not that exciting. But they're going there. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to show you my usage. So... This is the last 30 days and some tricky stuff that I've been doing. Now, on this screen here, the yellow, I've got this in my consumption. So, on the last 30 days, it shows in the last 30 days, I've pulled 511 kilowatt hours from the grid. 
Now, 692 kilowatts from the Gen Set. They're actually not a generator. I'll explain that in a second. What I've used from batteries and what I've used from solar. Now, we use a ton of energy here. Unfortunately, I just lost my business in the floods. So I don't have a huge big, uh, well, I've got a 25 kilowatt solar system at home. It is pretty big for the normal person. But we've got a lot of crypto miners and things like that that, you know, I had at a business that was mining for free that I'm now running at the house and I just don't have enough roof space to do it all in the above. So I've been playing around with some smarts and things like that. So the yellow is what you consume from solar. The blue is what I've been consuming from batteries. Now green, I'm going to explain the green. Now what I've actually been doing with my green, I've actually using a couple of different things to do this. With the green, it's actually my off-peak. So I've got my system set up that what happens is when the network turns their off-peak power on, what happens is it turns the off-peak on. My system thinks it's a generator. So my Victron thinks it's a generator coming through when the off-peak's on. And what it does, it starts to charge batteries. So it takes over priority. It says, right, if there's solar cranking, let it feed back to the grid. The generator's on. Let's charge the batteries. And so, yeah, so pretty much I've got this up at nighttime. Um, what happens normally most days between 3 and 5 o'clock, the network will turn the generator on. Um, well, they'll, they'll dump loads through their, their off-peak relay. That charges my batteries. It gets me through to about 5 o'clock. They turn it off. I live on batteries from 5 to, you know, sort of 7.30, 8 o'clock at night is sort of when I, run out, when I run out of batteries. And then that cheap energy comes back on at 10 o'clock at night. It'll charge my batteries back up full get me going. Now, what I've done, I've had to work out and because the weather's changed here up in the Northern Rivers, um, we've gone from winter, terrible sunshine, things like that. I've got another relay which basically opens up and been using um, the Catch Solar Relay. So what, just, what, this, what this Catch Solar relay, relay does, it actually gets rid of the off-peak for me. So in the middle of the night, at one o'clock, I've got it set for at the moment. I've just adjusted that this morning put it back to one o'clock. So what happens, it goes back to one o'clock, it starts discharging my batteries. That'll actually get me through to about eight o'clock in the morning. I did have, I was trying to get through to nine o'clock because um, the most expensive time up here is sort of that seven to nine o'clock for us in the Northern Rivers. Um, but basically because the weather's changed, you've got so much sunshine, I pulled it back an hour. So literally, because by eight o'clock in the morning, and this is all going to change when daylight saving changes, which is annoying. But 8 o'clock in the morning, my solar panels are cranking. I don't need the off-peak anymore. And I'm not discharging for batteries because I've got enough solar to cover my load. So what I'm trying to do with this catch relay is, you know, I open a contact and get rid of the off-peak, get rid of that generator, and, and it disappears, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, so that's quite fun. I've been playing around doing that there. So with that catch power. And as you can see, you can have a look here. Um, we'll use the solar edge data. I've got... Lots of different data monitoring my house here. You see with solar analytics. Now, solar analytics is not the best solution to monitor if you've got batteries. Now, you can. There's a way. This negative here, uh, it's a good I, I'll actually love it for this monitoring purpose, what I'm doing. It really shows. So that there is actually overnight when the generator is coming on. Um, we're basically taking energy from the, from the grid from solar analytics. It's in the negative. So it, doesn't, it messes all my numbers up, but it doesn't bother me. Um, because I've got some other stuff that I do. And as you see here, it looks like I use energy here in the morning. It's showing that there. But when we pop over to the solar edge, and this is actually a better one, I'll jump back a day. Where do I do that? Um, here we go, previous day, all right down there. It's all really hard for me to see. It's really small on my screen. So this will give you a good idea. As you can see, the red in this, I'm buying from the grid. The black there, sorry, the, the lack of energy uses there is that's when I'm basically using my batteries. And then as you can see, it starts to ramp up here and I start to use solar. And as you can see, about 8 o'clock in the morning, it just really starts to crank, you know. Come sort of 8.30 in the morning there, I've got 5 kilowatts of panels cranking. That's enough to cover my load and start to charge my batteries and do things like that, So which is pretty cool. And as you see overnight, come at 4 o'clock, my energy disappears because it can't see what I'm using from batteries because I don't have a solar edge system. Uh, for batteries, I'm using Victron for, for my battery base setup. And then as you can see there is when I start buying energy from the grid again, which is pretty cool. Now, that little app I showed you before, so that's how my energy works use. Now, this charge your EV from your solar. This is great, and I've been loving playing around with this. What this system does is what happens is when it starts feeding back to the grid, and depending how much, I've got some smarts set in my phone, and I've got some smarts on the app that when the energy is really cheap from the network, great. 
charge my car, dump all the energy you can. And what happens is it actually will adjust the charger in my car. And if there's only three kilowatts going back to the grid, it'll actually turn it up. So we're going to go back over here right now, have what's going on the Victron. We're still pumping loads from the grid here um, because grid from the, the energy from the grid right now is really cheap. And what will happen soon is my car will get full. It's actually not far from being full. It'll turn itself off. And um, yeah, so it actually adjusts my charge rate, which is great. So it's only going to charge from excess solar or when the energy is dirt cheap. And then what that allows me to do is overnight as well. When the energy is dirt cheap, I really want to charge the car overnight. And I'll just give you an example. Last night, I was looking at this data, researched for this video, and it was bloody all night long. It sat at 16 cents. My car didn't charge, which was pretty crazy because the, the energy rates all night were pretty expensive. So I can actually set it that when it's overnight, it's a four cents great charger car, which is awesome. Um, now, another thing I basically that I didn't mention before with the catch relay, it's another purpose it's doing. So this can control two contactors. So the other thing that the catch relay does, it basically gets rid of the off peak when it's not necessary, but it also turns on my solar hot water. So of a day when it starts in excess energy, go back to the grid. And there's some playing around I want to do with this um, because since I've installed the charge HQ software i've been using that um the priority right now is my car gets charged before my hot water gets hot and that's not how i want it um i'd ride a push bike i'm a fat bastard but um i would ride a push bike ride walk or probably get a cab more likely um to get to my destination and have a cold shower any day <laughs> so it's something i want to play around with and yeah it's something that this is the sort of thing that happens when you've got so many different softwares and so many things taking control and doing stuff that it's, um, yeah, which is get the priority and that's what's getting it right. So that's what I do. So the catch, catch relay, what it does in my house there, it, yeah, turns off my off peak to stop charging my batteries in the middle of the night, turns it off in the middle of the day as well. When there's excess solar, it turns off my off because what happens, the network sometimes when the energy is cheap, they, when they don't want it. They turn everyone's hot water on in the middle of the day to get rid of all the excess solar and dump it. And I don't want that. So when the catch sees loads of extra solar, uh, it actually turns off the off peak. Um, so it works opposite. It thinks it's turning something on is how I've got it tricked, but the contactor works opposite. So it gets rid of the off peak. So the generator can't charge my batteries and deals with that. So, And then on the other relay, what happens when it sees excess solar going to the grid it starts charging my hot water and heating my hot water up and turns a contact on to heat my hot water, which is pretty cool. So that's what I use that device for. And um, yeah, so this is a platform I'm actually using at the moment. Uh, I won't go into that too much, but this has actually got my system working on the Wholesale network with the AMO. So just give us some examples here. Um, so the easiest way to work out what the price of energy is right now is wherever you are around Australia, um, divide this by 1,000 because that's the price per megawatt hour. So I'm on commercial rates right now by using this and the smarts that I'm paying 3.2 cents. If I was buying energy from the grid right now, which I am, um, we go back over here. So I'm buying you know nine kilowatts from the grid. Typical person on time of use around Australia right now, be paying about 40 cents a kilowatt hour. And I'm paying three because I'm on the wholesale rate, um, which is quite fun. So something to think about. So yeah, so I've got some programs and algorithms that you know I've changed to you know an energy company that's allowing me to access the wholesale rates and I'm playing around some smarts and things like that. So I've got programs that turn things on and off and all this stuff that you see that's going on. Um, yes, yeah, cool. So now with, um, there's a few other things I've got in my system. I want to show you some one other thing. So my problem with my EV charger, I've actually just, this today has arrived. I'm so excited about this. So I just went down to the shop and uh, the courier driver was sitting there about to phone me and he had this delivered for me. So I'm pretty excited about this. I ordered this about six months ago. And it's just arrived, which is pretty cool. So this is Victron actually doing a, a car charger. So this is another thing I require to throw into the spinner in, into my system here and make this work. And I think this is going to help me solve my problem of a day that um, is going to help me charge my batteries and do other smarter stuff rather than use a charge HQ. So it's another thing that's going on the system, something to think about. So yeah. Now, um, we don't need to see that one. Uh, oh, cool. That's what I was actually going to show. So, yeah. Um, I won't go into the details, but what I've actually got in um, in my Victron, I've also got another contactor inside the Victron I'm using. Now, if you think about what I was doing with the catch relay, uh, I do have another circuit with the Victron that I'm turning on and off and things like that. So, I'm activating the contact to do a load. So, the same thing that you can actually do with the catch relay, you can actually do with the Victron. 
um, that have been playing around that there. So I've been using contactors and relays, but it's actually just a software programming, which I was going to show you uh, with that there using the VE config tools, which is pretty cool. I'll go into more depth of that in another other video. So now what I want to get into and show you some stuff now, um, yeah, the other few things that I've been doing, now my proper true battery backup, and everyone sort of says to me like, Mike, what's your battery backup? But all this stuff here that I'm doing with the Victron, this to me is fun. You know, I love living off grid. That's what I do. But it's about saving money and playing with this sort of stuff. And I'm in the industry. It's what I do. You know, probably I would never advise anyone to do what I've done unless you just want to spend a ton of money um, to do some cool stuff and just automate all this. And that's what I've been really playing around, playing around with. Now, if you think about how I'm doing it, run my batteries down to 15%. As you can see, they're down to 15%. They get down to that 15% mark there. That's for now. So if there's a blackout, so if the grid does fail, the reality is I've got nothing left in my battery backup and everything will turn off. So in the way my house works, what I've actually done, I've actually used these eco flows. Oh, we won't get into that one yet. yet. That's an exciting one. So I've actually got one of these Delta Pros. Now this actually plugs in and in a blackout situation runs my lights, my TV, my fridge. Uh, that's all I really want in a blackout situation. For me, when the grid just fails and goes out, I just want to keep the lights in the fridge and stuff like that on. If I do want anything else on, I don't have my generator auto start because I am using grid that replaces my generator auto start. I can't, I don't have that ability. I require to go into the shed, flick a switch, turn my generator on. So I actually have I wear one of these blue diamonds. Um I actually had one of these go through the flood um, when, when we get affected by the floods there down in Lisbon. I thought, right, I'm going to give this a crack. And I've been running on chip oil, so it's been pretty cool. So I'm doing some crazy stuff with that too. And I want to work out that when the energy is really expensive, how I can start the chip oil up and, you know, chip oil generator up and use that to basically run the house or feed energy back to the grid or something. I'm working on it. So I'm doing some fun stuff with that there, guys. So, um, so yeah, so in a blackout situation, I am using this. I just want lights, TVs, and fridges, and that's it. And if I want anything else, it goes to start the generator up. So technically, you think about it, I've got two systems. I've got my big off-grid system that you know runs my house. And as long as the grids are available, it all works, and it's designed to make my life most as cost-effective as possible using the cheapest prices from the grid or using the batteries or using the solar. And that's what that's designed for. Now, this Delta, it sits around. It's full. It never gets cycled. It's just stuck there. It's plugged into UPS. You know, it keeps this computer here going. My internet's just up there and the lights of the house and the fridge. That's it. And it's always saved there for a battery backup blackout. That's what it's there for, which is pretty cool. Um, and it's one other thing I'm going to throw and show you as well. So some other smarts I've got as well. Uh, coming up to summer, I haven't really used this or um, I'm going to learn about the issues coming up over the next few few months um, with this here. I use these Sensibo Skies. Now, these are designed to turn the air cons on and off. So they work that, they, you know, I've integrated them in that they talk to the solar edge and, when they say energy going back to the grid and if the room's at a certain temperature, they crank up my air cons and they cool my house down. So, um, yeah, so I've been playing around with these Sensibo Smarts. So they're really good and they're really great. And even if you're not into all this sort of stuff, if you just want to be able to be driving home, you know, think your house is hot as, you want to turn your air con on, these are great. I think they're 150 bucks or something like that. Uh, yeah, $149 for the one. Got a couple of air cons, get the kits, but they're really easy to simply install, get on an app and turn your aircon on and off. They're not really simple to deal with with the solar. It It's really hard. So just, yeah, I haven't written a document there. It's actually annoying um, basically to make that happen. So um, we're working on some APIs and things like that to make it easy. So something to think about. So yeah, so what I'll actually jump back um, and as I finish this video up. So there's a lot of moving parts that I've got in there. And one of the things when I first got into solar, one of the biggest things that annoyed me and the people I was working with that, I always want to go, right, I want to design solar systems that just work for people. They're simple and easy. And over the years, we have installers and contractors and other people doing jobs I've been involved in. I've learned a lot of lessons on how people think and things can get really complicated. And as you can see how I run my house, there's so many different apps and programs that are complicated. Now, this smart panel, I'm actually, there's actually one right there. There we go. Um, I've actually been testing that and playing around with that. So this smart panel, what it actually is, you'd actually rip out your old um circuit board at home basically and replace it with this here and it's full of contactors and relays and all through an app you can say hey right when the batteries get under 80 percent dump that load back to the grid you know turn this on do this do that there's lots of smart things you can do with this smart panel it's actually all built in which is pretty cool 
And you see these little plugs down the bottom here? This is actually, so you've got this, and then all you do is you actually just plug your solar generator into it, and then when there's a blackout, it takes it over, which is pretty cool. And you can do some smarts with it that, you know, you can actually use it overnight. Um, so, right, run the batteries from the battery overnight, of a day, charge it from this and that sort of stuff. So I've been doing some work with these guys, playing around with that. I'm pretty damn excited about that there too. So, um, cool, guys. Yeah, look, I think that's really about it. Uh, I know there's a lot of things that I went over in this video, and there's also a lot of things I didn't cover. Uh, and the two things I've been working on, is what I've been really focusing my attention on. I want to make that simple and come from one company. And um, it's a bit of a challenge. I think I've actually found a product, which it still requires a little bit of skill. And also they have a support team, which is great. One of the things I'm unsure yet, whether they work with Victron, but literally they have taken all that, everything I've sort of talked about there, and they've put into one little Raspberry Pi. It's a bit more than a Raspberry Pi, but um, it's a little you know computer board uh, that you can log into their software and, and make it, turn relays on and off and things like that. So, and it works with a lot of different programs, which is pretty cool. And that's what we're looking for. So um, cool guys. I hope this has been helpful. Any comments or questions down below. And like I said, in the next video, what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to give you a walk around. I'm going to show you all this crazy stuff and I'll break this video up and I'll actually do some more detailed on, you know, let me know in the comments below, what would you like to see next? More detail on whether how I'm doing my crazy stuff with my off peak energy how I've integrated to the wholesale network to buy and sell cheap at high and low prices and things like that. So let us know in the comments below what you guys want to hear. And uh, until next time, make hay while the sun shines. Thanks and have a great day.